Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, you will have seen the bright thumbnail. You will have read the title. You may even have read some of the description. So you know this is round two with the Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson Conspiracy Palette. I'm trying to get this in such a way that it'll actually show up on because these confuse the heck out of the mm. So round two with a conspiracy palette where as I'm pretty sure you can guess I hit the middle row the unwearable shades the shades that are ridiculous that nobody would ever want to put on their face I put them all on my face so if you want to find out exactly how well or not the shades performed then my friend you are in precisely the right place grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy my darlings because cheers here it comes hey welcome back from the intro right Round two with the conspiracy palette. I kind of wish this box was not a pulley outy one. I wish it was like um, blue blood where you open it up because it's this is quite a flexible cardboard. I just worry I'm going to break it. Right, I'm going to go in today and I'm going to concentrate on. The row in the middle, the least wearable. The one that's going to intrigue me the most in this is going to be food videos, this yellow, because they had to put a lot of yellow pigment into that. And I know when I swatched it, it swatched like a neon pigment swatches. So I get the feeling that is going to be a bitch. To work with. But um, as always this is a teaching channel um, because of my chronic pain I can't blend as quickly as most people. Uh, that combined with the fact that I want absolute beginners to be able to follow my tutorials means that I probably go a little bit slower than most people's do. So if you're more uh, experienced and if you can blend quicker there's a speed widget up there. Please use it, okay? Right, face is washed, moisturised and primed. Um, because I've not been sleeping recently, this has caused me a lot of stress because of the high pain levels. Uh, and I've, I've got some visitors, some stress visitors. So I have got a little bit of concealer covering those up because do you think I could find my colour corrector to make them not look like Rudolph's glowing nose on my chin? No. Let's get you zoomed in. Uh, I'm going to talk you through the eye shapes again between the, the difference between hooded and deep set eyes because they are often mistaken for one another and the workarounds for them both are very different. Um, if you're a regular viewer and you've already heard me say all of this many times, you can fast forward until you see me wave a brush at you with some colour on it. For those of you who've not heard it, hi. On my lids, at the moment I have got my Crow and Pebble primer in a blank page cotton. I do have a discount card with them. I don't earn from it, they've never sent me PR. They did allow me to buy some pigments prior to launch so I could get the film up before they launched, um, but I paid for them, they did not send them to me. 
the discount code is listed with all of my others in the description box. They all clearly state whether I own from them or not. Crime Pebble do six shades at the moment. They've got a white, which is this one. At the lightest end, they have a chocolate brown and a black at the deepest end, and then three skin tone shades in between. The reason I like this primer the most is because it goes on dry, so you can blend on it straight away without having to set it, so you're not compromising blendability for colour impact. Okay. I've got deep set eyes. Uh, sometimes hear them referred to as double lidded eyes. Now, when I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see much of it, but you can see it, so I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to your lash line, part or all of that mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye because this is the eye that I'm blind in. Um, so I can make sure I'm still on screen and in focus. If I cover my visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again, if not more, that tucks back away out of sight. Same thing if I cover the static lid and close the eye. I've got lid space there that tucks back away as well. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issue that people with hooded lids get in that I get transference of colour from the mobile to the static lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just on the socket. And when I'm using glitter glues, I still get a bare patch through here. Now, the workarounds. If you have hooded lids, get a brush like this or a pencil brush and sketch out a new crease line. Now obviously, that will reduce the space between your new crease and your brow. All you have to do is use a slightly smaller blending brush and if necessary take the colour right up to the brow rather than leaving a gap. Okay. If you have deep set eyes like myself, what we have to do when we're putting the colour through the crease is stop, relax and just check we've brought it up high enough that we can see it when the eyes are open. So, two very different methods there. Um, in my description box I do have listed a film where I recommend different brushes and uh, one of those brush sets is from Aliexpress oh dear excuse me I've got hiccups and I'm going to go in with a brush from that set which is blending brush 7 it's a big round it is round it's just there we go big round fluffy blending brush and I'm going to start off by going in with pigment. Ooh, kick up in pan on this is real. Right. Now I hold the brush right at the base, so I'm putting as least pressure on as possible. I'm going to start about halfway down the lip, wow, okay, and do little circular movements. Now I much prefer to put a little bit of pigment on and build it up than put too much on and have trouble blending it out. So circular movements in this direction towards the nose, a bit of a bounce in the middle, and then reverse the direction to come back out again. The reason I do this is because it very gently moves the skin of your eye around and I'm 45 and I've lost 14 stone, which is just under 200 pounds in weight. So my, my eyelids move, basically. But I know 20 year olds who genetically have got looser skin on their eyelids. And this helps to stop the sort of barcoding or tiger striping effect you can get. Now, I do struggle with this eye because I've got very, very deep creases here where it was pulled around when I was five years old um, at the ophthalmic hospital trying to work out what was wrong with my eye. So I do very often have to stretch this lid out because I still get the barcoding and I have to do that for any colour I'm putting on the, the mobile lid otherwise it... I'll explain when I get to that point. 
um, but I also struggle here and here, either side of the pink, um, with dry patches on my eyelids, which sometimes makes it difficult to get a pigment to blend on it. Uh, but I do know the difference now between a pigment misbehaving and my eye being particularly obstreperous. Um, so this pigment shade is blending very nicely indeed. Now your eyes are not symmetrical and unlike James Charles I do not Photoshop or Facetune or filter anything and this is a very obvious Snapchat filter on Instagram in which case I've usually got ears or soft focus behind me or something uh, but if, if ever I do that the first few pictures will always be without a filter because I want you to be able to recreate what I do I'm not going to do a look and then fiddle about and tart about with it and then Photoshop it across so that both eyes look symmetrical so just sit back and relax your brows and just check you've got the same shape both sides okay so I'm going to clean this brush off on the clean washcloth that I've got here I much prefer using a washcloth to a uh, colour switch it's much more gentle on your brushes especially if you're using natural hair um, this is a synthetic brush but I still, I, I don't use colour switches anymore, I find them far too harsh on the bristles. Right, I'm going to go in and I'm going to try that food videos. Same brush. So I'm packing the pigment on. Wow. And I'm just going to blend this just on the top of the pink there just so it's pulling a little bit of the pink into it but I still want the, the yellow to peep out okay I am very pleasantly surprised with how that has actually blended I was not expecting that to blend that easily um, colour me shocked. Seriously, I was, well you know, I was expecting this, I was expecting to have real trouble with this shade. Um, okay, I actually quite like the colour it makes. It makes like an apricot colour when you, where it mixes with the pink. That's super pretty. I think this is the one where they actually <laughs> the manufacture it, they've used something like five years worth of the pigment that this manufacturer held. So they're having to, that's that's why there's a delay on the restock. I think I think in the last episode Shane's thing, Shane's film, um, or docu-series around this, or for those of you who are less favourable calling it a seven part advert um, they said that they're looking at March and May next year as in 2020 for the restock and I believe that a lot of that is trying to get hold of the colour that they need for this this yellow and it is an integral part of the, um, the palette so and I know that um, when they got the initial sample through, they sent it back and said more pigment, more yellow. Uh, and you can absolutely see why. I mean, that's a stunning shade. And like I said, I'm actually pleasantly surprised with how well that has blended out. I really wasn't expecting that. Genuinely, I was not expecting that. You always get my 100% honest view on things. If, if, if this was shit, I'd tell you. Um, mainly because I'm a crap at lying. Okay. Wow. Alright then. Hmm. I 
I'm going to get a slightly more densely packed brush. This is from that same set, but they call it the Contour Brush 9. So it's still a circular brush, but if you look, oh, that's the brush I'll just put back. That's the brush I'll just put back. This is the brush I've just used. This is the brush I'm going to use. So you can see it's almost half the the um, diameter. I guess it's half of it. Um, however wide the head of the brush is, that's how far it will blend out. Um, I am going to dip into Flaming Hot. Reds are Reds and purples are pretty much the most difficult shades to create. And this is a very, very neon red. So I'm kind of expecting problems with this one as well. I might tap off a little bit actually. So I'm going to just tiny little circular movements through the crease. Again, I'd rather build the pigment up than struggle to blend it out. But it's the same thing in all the way, just change the direction of the circle as you come back again. And I'm just very gently feathering that to soften the edge. I kind of need to bring it up a little bit higher. I might grab different brush actually. Let's grab one that's a little bit more. Yeah, let's try this one. This is what they call the large shader brush. But it's flat. Which I think will make it a bit easier because I can keep it more level. And blend. Okay. This pigment feels like it's a little bit harder pressed than the others. So we're just taking a little bit more to build the shade up. But as I said, I, I went in quite cautiously with the amount on the brush anyway. Okay. Let's pop a bit of that on this outer corner here. Yeah, see, some of these, you barely touch them. And the, the pigment is like on the brush. This one I'm actually having to dig a bit harder for to pick the pigment up. I'm not complaining. It's just information. I've kind of completely lost pigment now, haven't I, between those? Never mind. It's acting as a nice base for this flaming hot actually. You can see a bit easier with this eye because obviously I can close it so you can you can see the the brush movement a little bit easier. That's what I was meaning about that barcoding. And you can see I only held it out for the length of time that was needed to blend and I didn't put it out to my ear hole. And pop a little bit of this pigment on the outer third of this mobile lid too. It's weird how this is by far the firmest pressed shadow so far that I've used out of the palette. Okay. I'm 
this is going to be a stainer. Look at my brush. This is going to be like blood sugar. Although this is one of the ones which are marked as an, a pigment rather than an eyeshadow. Uh, basically all that means is that um, it may stain and if you've got very sensitive skin you may get a slight irritation with it. Um, your best bet if you're worried if you've got sensitive skin test it somewhere like the crook of your elbow 24 hours before you want to use it see if you get a reaction um, if you get staining it really doesn't bother me because I can just chuck eyeshadow primer over it the next day and chuck some more colour on top so doesn't worry me at all ok I've got about as much pigment out of that brush as I can crikey blimey right I'm going to go in with, this is one of the Jeffrey Morphe brushes, but not one of the ones from the set. This is one of the ones sold individually. This is the JS24. It's actually a lip brush, but it's great for getting right down into this corner here. Now, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will kill the pigment. However, once I've loaded pigment onto the brush, I am going to be wetting it with some of this wet and wild primer water. I'm going to go into Trisha. Wow, this is super soft. Okay, very, very gently with this one, folks. Wow. Yeah, super, super soft. Um, you can use any liquid. I mean, you can use primer water. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC, Fix Plus or Maria Badescu. You can use a setting spray, you can use a finishing spray, you can just use clean water. Always dry your ferrule off though, which is this bit here, because you don't want moisture getting down and loosening the glue on your bristles. Let's have a play. I've got a little mirror here that I'm going to look into down here so that hopefully you can still see what's going on here. So I'm going to come in with Trisha on this inner third of the eye. That's lovely. And there is hecking pigging fall out though. Even wetting that pigment. Can you see the fallout? And the fallout stains so don't whisk it away do your base afterwards this is a uh, just got my cellar water on it it's uh, charcoal my cellar water which is why it looks black but um, yeah, I'm just going to clean that I would not advise you to do your base first if you're going to be using Trisha right let's dry the brush off Back into Trisha. Trisha. And re wet it both sides. I might give it an extra couple of squirts, see if I can stop some of the fallout. Cut about here. The reason I have to do this is because of these deep creases. If I don't, the pigment kind of builds up loosely rather than being blended out. And um, as it dries through the day, as I move my eye, it all sort of cascades down my face, which is not a good look. Let's clean this off my brush as best I can. Yeah, giving it that extra squirt really helped. I've got far less fall out this side. And I am then going to go into, I think, Conspiracy. Look how pink this is gone. Right. Let's go into Conspiracy. This is also a very, very soft shade, so be careful with it. 
and it's so soft just literally I've swatched it once this is the first time I've put any on the brush and I've pretty much lost the Illuminati symbol already so yeah really treat this palette with kid gloves because these are some very very softly packed shadows pop this onto the section of the eye that so far was naked and I'm going to very gently sort of blend that in with the Trisha shade just so we get hecking full out with this one as well just so that it blended a little easier there let's see if I've got enough on the brush yeah it looks like I have to do this side as well and again just Gently buff it in with Trisha just to soften where those two colours meet. Okay. Like that. Might go back in and see if I can get some of that pigment to show back up again. Because we've completely lost her. So let me get, this is clean but it's um, just stained, it's a Morphe M562. I'm just going to go back into that pigment shade and just see if I can give it a bit of a moment back. This is the beauty of the makeup. You can always go back in and adjust and add and play. And if you don't like the final look, you can take it all off and start again. Because it's only makeup, it washes off. Okay. Right. I'm going to pause you just briefly while I chuck some base items on, foundation and whatnot. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Uh, for you, there'll be absolutely no delay at all. I will, however, see you the very next time that I press the record button. Hello. I am back and I decided to go for hot pink brows now disclaimer I haven't seen any of these on Revolution's site for quite a while I'm hoping they're just repackaging and that they'll be back because I'm kind of getting used to having these coloured brows it's good fun I do kind of feel like a tutti frutti ice lolly right now. But hey, who's complaining? Right. I am going to go in with my flat top brush and I'm going to go into Flaming Hot, which obviously is the shade that we put through the crease. Yeah, I was really having to dig in to get that onto this brush. So I kind of link it up and pull it all the way along. Now I don't tend to put anything in my waterline because I've got very sensitive eyes. It's starting to walk up water already. And that's without anything in the actual waterline. Um, I've, I've always had sensitive eyes even before I had fibro and fibro's made it worse. Um, 
I used to be able to wear the all day all night lenses where I could put a contact lens in obviously into the eye that I see with uh, at the beginning of the month, leave it in for 28 days take it out, give my eye a night off overnight put another one in, I did that for years without any problems uh, now I struggle to keep a lens in for more than about 3-4 hours so putting anything in the waterline, I do sometimes do it just for photos and stuff but it comes straight out pretty damn quick I tell you right this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it because it's flat topped and it's chunky but it's great for getting up under those lashes. And the only shade I haven't used from that middle row is Cheese Dust. I'm going to use that to buff out the lower lash line. Oh it really is like the colour of Cheetos. Oh wow. Ooh, I need to do a yellow and orange look with this palette. Took that a little bit lower than I was intending, but I'm going to run with it. I like it. Now this is a brush, it's a lip brush, I got it from eBay probably a decade ago now. Um, I'm going to dip into Diet Cola, pop that on the inner corner, this is literally like liquid mercury, like quicksilver, and then pop it underneath and just blend it into that the, the orange and red there. And then do the same thing on this side. That's just so pretty. And then I'm going to dip into Ranch. And pop just a little bit of that. under the tail of my hat pink brow right I'm going to pause you for one final time while I do more highlighter mascara lipstick and I'll be back with the final look Again, my darlings, for you, it will be instant. Okay, so I fibbed. I'm back. I decided to have a bit of a play. I've got some of these dotting tools, which are actually nail art tools. And I've put some of uh, shade... Oh my god. On my Pokemon phone case. And I'm just dipping the dotted end in. And then using it just to dot along the lash line. Obviously, these are not designed to be near your eyes. I take absolutely no responsibility if you decide to follow this and end up hurting yourself. I do not recommend you do this. I am literally just showing you how I do it. A safer way to do it would be to use a, um, a very fine brush and just use the tip of the brush to cause the dots. But I've done that and kind of just created a little bit of a wing effect with it as well. So rather than just come back on and tell you what I'd done, I thought I would pop on and just show you how quick it is to do that. 
next time I come back I really will be finished. I am back looking a little ridiculous to be quite honest. Um, I used Ranch as the highlight again and obviously used oh my god on my lips. Now I wouldn't necessarily wear this like this. If I had the gloss I'd stick the gloss on and I probably would actually wear it. Um, I would most likely use this either as a graphic liner either in dots or paint an actual liner on or I would tap this out over a deeper colour. It is one of those shades that makes your teeth look a little bit yellow. However, I thought it matched the mad neon look. So, here you go. Here is my second play with the slightly less... Uh, I hate saying wearable because every colour is wearable but the more unique shades from the palette let's let's put it that way so uh, what do I think I was genuinely shocked at how well the yellow blended out I was not expecting that from a neon pigment which had got that much colour pigment in it, the fact they sent it back twice to have to have more colour pigment put in, the more colour pigment compared to the either the mica or the talc ratio that are mixed in with it, the higher the colour pigment level in relation to um, mica and talc the more difficult it is to blend out. It's the talc and the mica that make these pigments easier to blend. So obviously if you've got a higher, if you've got more pigment than blending materials in a shade, I was expecting this to be hell on earth to blend out to be quite frank. Um, and I have been very very pleasantly surprised at how well that actually blended out. Um, Likewise, I, Trisha and Conspiracy both have hecking fallout to them, even when you wet the pigment. So, unless you're the sort of person that puts cart tons of powder under your eyes, and if you're over 25, don't do that. Baking is not your friend. Um, I would very, very solidly advise doing your base after you've done your eyes. So you can just wipe the pigment away with some micellar water or a face wipe or however you deal with fallout on your face. Um, but they are both super, super pigmented. Uh, pigmented was a very lovely shade. Um, kind of got a little bit lost so I had to build it back up again. Mainly because the yellow blended on it so well I was not expecting that. Um, the... What was it? Flaming Hot? Yeah, Flaming Hot, the orangey red, the deepest shade. That one so far is the most densely, most hard packed of all of these pigments. So far, every single other colour has been very, very softly packed. It's very easy to get pigment up onto the brush, etc, etc. With Flaming Hot, you have to work to get pigment onto the brush. However, once you get the pigment on your brush, it does blend. It needs a little bit of coaxing, but then most reds do. Um, all told, the neon unwearable, gonna be difficult to use row wasn't anywhere near as difficult as I was expecting. Um, this liquid lipstick is very similar, similar, similar in formula to uh, I don't know if you've used Virginity from the summer twenty fifteen collection. Was that the, the yellow ones? I think that was the yellow ones. Twenty fifteen. Um, in that, when you put it on, was a tad patchy so you're better off if you unless you've got filler on your lips and you have no lines 
put it on and then hold your mouth out like this while it dries. Okay? You look really stupid, you look like you're in a wind tunnel and you're a little bit of a way. But um, it will stop it from settling into lines in your mouth and then you can assess which areas look a little bit patchy and need a bit of blending and, and touching up. With all liquid lips, I always advise do the bottom lip, do the top lip, don't rub them together because I've seen a lot of people put it on the bottom lip, rub the lips together and go, oh, it's patchy. No shit, Sherlock. Um, that's fine if you're using a bullet lipstick, not so much with a liquid lipstick. Um, I always do the bottom lip and then go in and do the top lip, let it dry and then assess whether or not it needs another coat or just patching up here and there. Um, as I said, it's not necessarily a shade that I'm going to wear on its own. I might, once I can get hold of Shane Glossin, um, I might try this with some gloss over the top. Um, see if that makes it more wearable. But like I said, I'm most likely to use this uh, either as a, uh, a coloured liner, either graphic dots like I've done today, or using a very fine artist brush to uh, draw a normal wing liner on. Um, I've also got disposable mascara ones so I might even use it as coloured mascara as well. If I do the, the line with the pink I'll probably do the lashes to match. I've done them black today because I wanted the pink dots to have their moment to themselves. Uh, I didn't want it to detract away from the overall look. Um, so this is a slightly thinner consistency to some of his liquid lips um, but you know just give it a second coat once it's dry and you'll be absolutely fine. It's built up absolutely exactly the same as his other ones do. Um, very very lightweight. Kiss proof. What more could you want? So, um, I've now used two thirds of the palette and so far I'm very happy with the colours I've used. There's just a neutral row to go, uh, which I will be doing for you so that I will have used the whole palette on screen um, and then I'll start looking at the mini controversy palette. Um, depending on how quickly the green shade, the, the, the green that I, I could have slapped that woman that, that worked at his factory when she said take that green out. But they're now going to include that um, in the reworked Mini Conspiracy palette and the holographic packaging they're going to change to be more green tinged like the Matrix. Uh, but they are going to be selling that shade as an individual, so if you have bought the original Mini Controversy palette, you can buy that shade individually anyway, which, fingers crossed, could mean we get to the stage where Jeffrey produces his own magnetic palettes and starts selling these colours as singles, so that if you have hit pan, apparently my Elvis curl wants to come back, if you have hit pan on one of your shades, you can get that shade rather than having to buy a whole new palette. Uh, I will be extremely interested in that because uh, Safe Word in Androgyny is the perfect contour shade. And I have been waiting for that to come out. In <sighs> I have been waiting for him to bring that out as a contour shade and he hasn't. Um, so I would like to be able to pick a couple of those up, please, thank you, kindly. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully that will be a, a, a way for... And again, if, if you like maybe just the bottom row of this palette, if you start selling singles, you could just buy the bottom row of this palette. However, hopefully you will... Uh, be tempted to try something maybe not quite as bold as this uh, but perhaps sticking a pop of colour on your lid with a neutral look 
and uh, gently ease yourself into using brighter shades. However, this is the future, I am waffling. Uh, if you are one of my 4F beauties, please double check you are still subscribed, even if I'm still appearing in your recommended videos because YouTube are still unsubscribing people. Uh, if however you are new, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I've got a lot of other films you can watch if you're not sure yet whether you like me. Uh, but if you have decided that you quite like this nutty bird, there is a subscribe button just, just down there. Uh, bright red, you can't miss it. Uh, give that a click, turn it to grey, jump through however many hoops YouTube are asking for at the moment to get notifications because just liking the channel doesn't mean you want to watch them apparently. Right, that is quite enough for me for one day. Uh, all that remains for me to say, as ever, my darlings, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.